friends, it's Susanna. I am back today to give you some tips on paper layering. This was a request that I received from a Creatives Club member. She was asking if I could just share my personal tips on layering paper. So I am just going to jump right in and get started. I'm gonna show you three different layering techniques that I use. So this first one, I'm gonna show you how I layer papers um, and different materials on a layout. So I either lay a, uh, do my layering on a layout or I do it to mat a photo. So I'm going to show you two ways to mat a photo and I'm going to show you this one way to add paper or to add paper layering to your layout. And I'm sorry if I'm fumbling over my words. It's been a while since I've recorded. And another apology, um, I live in a city so there are a lot of noises going on outside. There's like a street sweeper or something going on out there. So if you can hear that, I'm sorry. I, I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. So I started out with an eight and a half by 11 piece of white cardstock, and then I chose some papers that I felt coordinated well together. So I chose a solid. I always make sure to have a solid or something that is very close to a solid. I'm gonna show you in one of these how I, I create without a solid. So we'll get an example of everything in here. Then I went ahead and added different size papers Different sizes and different textures are really important. So if you see, I just tore a piece of paper. If you tear away from yourself, you will get a white line. If you tear toward, or sorry, opposite. If you tear toward yourself, you will get a white, like that white line. If you tear away from yourself, you will get a clean, wait, Oh my gosh, I'm mixing it up here, but you can see what I did. One of the ways you get a clean, crisp, no white tear, and the opposite way you get the white edge. So I went ahead and tore two different papers so that I could layer those on top of each other. Now I'm going to adhere them all down. So I'm sorry I'm not explaining this well. I feel like watching it really explains it better than me saying anything, but I am going to try my best to explain what I'm doing here. I'm putting down the solid color first. The solid makes a nice base for my patterns. I'm leaving a little bit of white space on the left side of that uh, solid piece of paper to tie in the white that's on the right side. So it, it brings it over and makes it feel like it's all one layout rather than just a hunk of patterned papers stuck on the, the white. Uh, piece of cardstock. Now I'm going in with a patterned paper. It's a contrasting color to the initial solid color paper that I used, and it has a pattern and it's a larger size. I'm adhering that down, and then I'm going to go in with my bold pattern. I try to always have at least one bold pattern, and this little building paper is my bold pattern for this. And again, I am going to show a little bit of that star pattern paper on the left side of it, and then keep the majority on the right side. It ties it together, but also um, adds that like layering effect, I guess, um, so that it doesn't just look like you have chunks of patterned paper placed randomly. Now I'm going in with this torn piece of solid colored gray paper, and I'm going to layer this underneath that patterned paper with the buildings on it. This will add a little bit of texture, a little bit of interest, and also a it separates the star the blue star pattern paper from the building paper. And then I have a piece of pattern paper that I tore that I am going to layer over the top so that I cover up that seam where the building pattern paper meets the gray pattern paper. Or the gray solid paper, sorry. <laughs> And that's really it. It's just a matter of layering pieces in a way that makes it feel like it's one and not miscellaneous pieces just kind of clumped together. And adding a little bit on each side and making it uneven so there's more on the right side than there is on the left side, that really ties it all together and makes it feel like it is supposed to be there. It's supposed to be layered that way. So here's a close-up look. And that completes this first one. Can you hear that? It just started pouring rain outside, which I'm not complaining about. I love the rain, so I'm really excited. It feels nice and cozy inside my apartment. Okay, so now I'm gonna start on the second one. The second one is going to be, oh, there it is, number two. I am going to show you how I layer pieces 
behind a photo. So I'm going to start with this black and white photo. It's of myself. Um, it's from a Thursday 3 that I posted on Instagram a while back. And then I'm just choosing some pattern papers. This is the one where I'm not going to use, oh, I am using a solid paper. Sorry, I'm going to use that same blush colored solid paper. And I'm going to use that as my initial mat to my photo. So I'm just going to create a very thin mat around my photo of this blush colored paper. This is going to um, make my photo stand out against those patterns and because my photo, photos have, I know this sounds strange, but photos have movement in them um, because of the different things that are going on inside of it and patterns have movement in them because of all the pieces that are included in a pattern. So putting that solid piece of paper as an initial mat will separate those pieces of movement and make your photo stand out from the pattern. So you can see there, when I layer that photo on top of that floral, that dark charcoal colored floral pattern paper, my photo pops instead of blending in. And normally it would blend in because my photo is that like gray color, the pattern is the gray color, so you'd lose the photo in the pattern paper and that's really what you want to avoid. So I mat it on a solid color and with photos I really put an emphasis on using different size pieces of paper. That creates interest and it draws the eye in different to different areas rather than just making your photo seem like it has a bunch of papers stacked behind it. This creates a layering interest. So now I am, after I created that left side of floral paper, that little layer right there, I am going to put this pink pattern paper on the entire thing. So I'm going to create another full size mat. And because it's a contrasting color from both my photo and that initial pattern paper that I used, um, it stands out really nicely. So I try to at least do one full-sized mat on my photo and then like maybe two or three different uh, sizes after that. So you can see I had one edge that is torn and I would have had to roughed up that, that torn edge on my hand so that it shows even more, so it stands out even more. And now I'm just tearing a few pieces off that mostly white pattern paper right there and I'm going to add that on either side of my photo so the torn edges add interest and because they're both very small pieces they separate themselves from the rest of the layers so there'll just be a little bit of white which is a very contrasting color to the other colors that I'm using um, and it'll it'll pop and because they're small it'll separate itself from all of the other layers so you'll see what I'm talking about here. I hope I'm explaining it okay. Um, it's kind of become second nature for me, so it's it's a little bit hard to explain. Like I said, it's more of a process to watch and kind of pick up. So you may have to watch this a few different times to really get the hang. And, and maybe you even have this playing when you're trying to do your layering yourself. So you have this playing and then you kind of mimic the different layers that I use on this with your own pattern papers and photos. So now I have that last pattern paper and it's thin so I went ahead and layered all of my layers on top of it and then cut it so it creates a very very thin border on both the top and the bottom of the photo so it's not showing on the left and the right sides just the top and the bottom. Here's a close-up look of that. That one is completed and ready to add to a layout. So the last one I'm going to do is going to be layering on a photo again, but this one I'm going to bring in some different elements that you can use other than pattern paper that will create um, texture in your layers. So I'm going to be using a piece of vellum and that's gold foil vellum. So the foil adds adds dimension and then the fact that you're using the vellum rather than a thick st uh, like a thick piece of paper also adds different dimension. And then I'm going to back my photo on tissue paper. So this is just tissue paper that I received in a package. I think it came in one of my Felicity Jane kits. And I am just going to back my photo on that. And then you'll see I'm going to messily cut a square around it. It's very messy. It's very imperfect. But those jagged lines match my messy style and add interest to the layers and dimension to the layers. So for me, it works. If you're into that really clean cut style, you may want to create a perfectly cut square around your photo. And you can still use tissue paper if you have a really clean cut style. I would just trim your lines in a more straight and structured manner. So then I'm adding a few more layers of tissue paper there so that I can just get that dimension and those choppy, those choppy layered looks. 
Um, and I'm actually going to take that long piece right there that I just showed a moment ago, and I'm going to do a little like ribbon fold, I guess. I don't really know what the fold is called. Um, it's like a, a scrunching fold. And my heater just came on. If there could be any more noises in this video, there I would be shocked. So again, I apologize. So I'm going to go ahead and add that paper in like a little scrunching effect. You'll see what I'm doing right there, just scrunching it up. And that's gonna add a lot of dimension. That extra layer of fold is going to be really noticeable among the crisp, clean lines of the patterned paper. So I'm just scrunching that up, super imperfect. Um, the more imperfect in my eyes, the better. So I just kind of slapped it on there and then went ahead and trimmed the excess off so that it doesn't take up too much of my layout. And then I roughed the edges up with my hand. So then I'm going to go in and I'm going to add this pattern paper. And because I started out with that full mat of the tissue paper, I am going to go in with a different size. I'm just going to put this strip of paper on the left side, and then I'm going to tear the bottom. And again, it really comes down to your judgment, what you think looks best, but different sizes of papers, different textures of papers, different colors of papers really go a long way. And I wouldn't do too much of a mat because it it'll make your photo really large and it just won't look right on a layout. Um, so keep that in mind, do th trimming like really thin so that it doesn't, I guess, doesn't show too much or doesn't take up too much space. You can see I'm just adding a few different types of uh, pattern paper here. I'm just trimming them to different sizes, tucking them in, layering them, ripping them, cutting them. Um, it's really trial and error, and the more you practice this layering technique, the better you'll get at it, and the more um, like second nature it'll become. Is that the right word, second nature? Yeah, I think. It, it'll just, it'll feel natural. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those days my brain just isn't working properly. You know how you, when you say a word that you've said many times and just doesn't sound right? I just had one of those moments. So then I'm just doing some extra securing, um, securing things down and then taking a look and then I'm going to go ahead and add in that vellum. Halfway through adding that vellum, well not adding the vellum, just cutting the vellum, my camera cut out but you don't miss anything, you just miss me cutting off a, a piece of the vellum. Again, I'm really sorry for the, the heater is really loud, this apartment is so old. So I'm tucking the vellum in, seeing where I want it, how much of it I want, and then I went ahead and cut it, and you can see those strips there. And then I'm just gonna tuck one of those strips into the left side to kind of balance the, the like, emphasis that is put on the right side by that folding and texture of the tissue paper. So I'm going to try to balance that out by putting this on the left side. And that's going to finish up this third one. So again, I hope that this helped. It's all practice. Maybe put this on in the background while you're layering so that you can get some ideas. And be sure to share your creations with me on Instagram, the different ways that you've tried layering using the hashtag the creatives club. I would love to see um, how you're using layers. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more crafty videos to come. If you have any specific requests for videos, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get those filmed and uploaded for you. I'm just giving you a little overview here of one, two, and three. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you guys soon.